In this lecture, we'll focus on the monitoring process, the second step in our issues management process. As a quick reminder, this is what the steps in the issues management process look like that we're developing. So we've already addressed the first step, scanning. Now we move into monitoring. While often paired with scanning and sometimes used interchangeably, monitoring is conceptually and practically a step separate from scanning. When scanning systems reveal a situation or a problem with the earmarks of an emerging organizational issue, the decision to monitor has to be taken. Heath argues that monitoring should only occur after an issue meets three criteria. First, it's listed in the risk register, which suggests a growing legitimacy as signaled by journalists and other opinion leaders. We'll talk more about risk registers in a moment, but they're really a way of just organizing research and systematically considering a consistent set of factors about issues, stakeholders, and the impacts of issues on organizations. They're a way to track the action taken as well. The second criterion it to count as an issue is that it has to offer a quantifiable threat or opportunity in terms of the organization's markets or operations. Because issues management is about the allocation of resources, what is monitored needs to have some measurable impact on the organization. Finally, the issue ought to be championed by a group or institution with actual or potential influence. So keeping in mind our stakeholder mapping process that we've discussed, issues that are only connected to legitimate or moral stakeholders are probably ones that shouldn't be prioritized unless there's a substantial risk or opportunity that is connected based on Heath's recommendations. A risk register is really just a log or basic database to identify risks, their severity, and what action steps that can be taken. It needs to provide a snapshot glance to see what's going on for an organization in its environment. They are used in most official project management logs. For example, if you ever go to project management certification, which by the way is a useful certification to have for communication managers, then you'll go through a PRINCE or PRINCE2 certificate process. That's something that's offered through a lot of executive education organizations. And this is likely to be a central part of the curriculum there. They can range from being quite simple to being more complex. They're very visual and often have a lot of content. Now, of course, this depends on the organization, number of issues, and managers, but they all seem to share some common features. So what we're going to do is go through some of the common features of a risk register and briefly define and describe them. So first, we have the risk title. Provide a brief name. This needs to be a one or three words, one to three word summary of the specific risk. For example, if you're in the fashion industry, a risk would be supplier factory safety. Second, offer a risk description. In about a sentence or a phrase, you would provide a brief description of the risk itself to clarify exactly what you meant by the brief title. So if we stick to the fashion industry and the supplier factory safety, then the description might be the safety of buildings used in the textile factories in Southeast Asia. Third, issues management category. Here you identify any of the four potential categories it could affect, including so so social, economic, political, and competitor. So what would our building safety issue affect? It would be social for reputation, economic for the bottom line, political for regulations, and competitors for industry impact. So it's quite possible that it affects all categories. Fourth, we would look at the risk category. Here, categorize the risk. Is it primarily an issue of time, cost, scope, resources, environment, reputation, or some other key category? What kinds of categories then would apply in the fashion building safety instance? Cost, reputation, supply chain, and operations would be quite sensible ones. Fifth, we'd take a look at present impact. Is the issue presently affecting the organization or likely to affect it in the six, next six months? This ends up being usually a pretty simple yes or no question. Sixth, competitor impact. Likewise, 
Is this presently affecting one or more of our competitors? Yes or no. Seventh, location risk. Which operational locations are likely to be directly affected? Eighth, is this an internal or an external issue? This asks the question, who is primarily affected? Identifying internal stakeholders, external stakeholders, or both. Then it starts to get more specific. So ninth, it looks at the stakeholders involved. So in the risk register, you would identify the stakeholders who are likely to be directly involved in the issue, as in either causing or going to be immediately affected by it. This is one of the reasons why it's a good idea to, to do the stakeholder mapping exercise that we discussed. If you already know who your stakeholders are and what their relationship is with the organization, then this side of it becomes a lot easier. Tenth, stakeholders affected. Regardless of whether they're directly involved with the organization, which stakeholders are likely to be affected directly by the situation? Eleventh, who are the issue champions? Regardless of involvement or impact, which stakeholders are likely to champion the issue? So in our in factory safety, labor organizations, governments, who likely is going to make the biggest conversation about it? And in this case, media certainly would be one of those. And then 12th, what is the issue trigger? That is, what event or events are likely to happen in order to trigger the issue's emergence? All of these factors need to be based on evidence. They need to be based on credible sources, credible information. This is a lot of times why we start with the news and move from there to other different kinds of sources. But in the end, the steps in the issues management process, especially with the monitoring, really focuses on producing the risk register. It's a snapshot of an organization's susceptibilities and problems at any given point in time. It is the critical piece of intelligence that allows an organization to move forward. Again, for more information, take a look at these sources.